Uh, All right, here, yeah, I'm Paul Schaefer. I'm Will Lee. And you are watching the Letterman Podcast. La, 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 la. Welcome once again to the Letterman Podcast. My name is Mike Chisholm. Today's episode is a lot of fun. If you've listened to one or two of these episodes in the past, maybe three or four, maybe you've been here from the beginning. I don't know. First off, thank you very much. Second off, you will know that I really enjoy talking to the writers. Um, and there's a lot of writers I haven't talked to yet. I want to get to them all if I possibly can. Uh, today is another episode with a writer. Uh, during, at the time of the recording, the writer's strike. Chris and I talk a lot about that. Chris Harris, is uh, he, he had a, a long run uh, on Late Show with David Letterman. I mean, well, I guess that's a, that's a matter of perspective, right? Five and a half years, six years, that's, that's a long time for a comedy writer to be in the trenches doing their thing. There are some marathon writers that are there. There are some people that lasted for uh, one 13 week cycle. Um, you know, Chris is in the middle there, but, but five and a half years is a long time when you're doing what you're doing. And we talk a lot about just how hectic it was. And uh, we have a, we have a good, good chat about the culture uh, for a writer at late show with David Letterman. Now here's a cool thing about Chris. Chris just finished the writing the re that's not a reboot the continuation of fraser fraser's about to come out i believe it's paramount plus in october uh 10 episodes were shot uh cut edited the whole thing before uh, any of these strikes that are going on right now it's um very very exciting to see this you know there's there's a new generation of people that are going to be introduced to fraser uh potentially but there's a generation of people who really enjoyed fraser both of his time on cheers and then of course his own uh, darling of a of, of a show that uh, won awards and and critical acclaim and just was such a, a an iconic uh, smart TV show. Well, now Frazier's moving back to Boston. There's still more sto more stories to be told, which is cool. And Chris got to be um, one of the few writers on 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 that project. Pretty cool. Um, so we kind of start the conversation talking about that. We talk about the fact that he has written kind of for two icons he's put words in the mouth of two icons uh david letterman of course and then and then uh fraser crane legendary fictional character uh he also was a key writer on how i met your mother so we talk a bit about that as well lots of letterman memories i just love talking to the writers um we're gonna have chris back for sure it was a delightful conversation i texted him afterwards just at the end of the day saying man i, I really we did it in the morning and my day was fantastic after that conversation. Um, I think you're going to see why we were both very, very happy. And of course we are talking, we talk about the, uh, the strike that's going on as well. And, and, and boy, I wish they would get this figured out. I mean, there are, you, you hear of Hollywood meetings that happen over a breakfast, you know, like, like get these, let's get these sides to the back to the table and, 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 and really, you know, let's be equitable to the creatives out there. Um, Chris is a, is a, is a good one. He's a good egg. Uh, and it's really cool that he took time out of his day to share uh, with us some of the stories of his years at Letterman on the Letterman podcast here. So without further ado, I know I'm not supposed to say it, but I'm saying it anyway, without further ado, here is Chris Harris. Um, so the thing about the interns that I love so much is there's, there's two uh, kind of reflections that I'm getting from it. Number one. Yes. Um, you know, you and I will get into like the, really the weeds and some of these, these, these really, really cool little moments. The interns are the fresher, uh, lighter perspective. I got to move Dave's car. I, <laughs> I, I, I got coffee for everybody. And then, you know, just as I rounded the corner at 53rd street, it all fell down on the ground. And this is what I did. Oh like, so, gosh. but it's funny. Um, I, I, I did one that, uh, it actually hasn't uh, come out yet, but it's in the can where they were an intern during 9-11. And, and it was it was like their job as an intern almost many times was to help freshen up this battle-hardened foxhole buddy staff that was you guys. And yeah. the interns brought in a breath of fresh air and youth and vitality into the place. So I'm I'm getting both of those, you know, from a wow. from, from from this perspective, but also hearing it from 
your perspective. Would you agree? That's what the interns. Uh, oh, they did oh that definitely. You guys? I, I, I felt like sometimes sometimes they took our fire so that we wouldn't so that we wouldn't be uh, aiming at each other as much. Uh, <laughs> and, and so so I there are definitely times where I was like, oh my gosh, we're 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 really uh, we're really putting them through the ringer. So it's funny to me that they, like you feel like they keep saying like I got to do this, I got to do this because I I would imagine like the. I, I think maybe because we were all older at the time, I was like, I, I feel like I, I think of those things as I had to do this. I had to do that. Uh, so good for them for having had such a, a great attitude about it. But you're right. They were fresher. They were, they were, there was this spirit of like, I'm happy to be here, yeah. uh, you know, and especially after we'd all been there for, for years, uh, it's, it's, it's a great perspective to get, you know, that, that, sorry, I'll just, I'll just run, run, run off on a tangent because please do. There That's is what the show is like, all about, brother. Yeah, when you when you're when you're in the business, when you're when you've been at Letterman for a few years, or you know, I'm, I'm out on the West Coast now. We'll talk about that. We'll you know, doing uh, sitcoms. After a year or two of it, you or or decades in my case, you 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 get jaded, and so the the perspective of someone, uh, you know, an intern, and it's their first job in the in the in the business, or bringing a guest onto set and watching them walk around, you're like, oh yeah, this is really cool. Look at what we're doing. This is so cool. So so I imagine they're 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 giving you some of that um, that feeling when they're when they're doing interviews. Absolutely, and 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 it's so funny, Chris. Like like so many of them think about it, and they're like. It was the greatest time of my life. Like we had a guy by the name of uh, of Ty Rogers on. Ty is like a radio personality in 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 like the Southwest. Like he and and his buddy Daniel have been like best friends and and big time morning radio show guys, regional. But like right now they're in Tulsa, and and I mean they're doing what they want to do. He was inspired to go into broadcasting uh, beforehand, became an intern calls it the greatest time of his life. And then he went in and became this broadcaster. You know, one of Paul's old interns, uh, Andy Carson, hosts uh, Good Day Oregon and has for the last 20 years. Uh, and 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 these Amazing. are the things that are so, and, and they they all, the the thing that, and I mean, I mean, I haven't talked to the ones who, who didn't have a good experience yet. I mean, so maybe <laughs> I'm jaded, but it's my little echo chamber happening. But yeah. all of them have used the phrase, it was one of the greatest times of my life. And, and uh, I just- I love hearing that that energy is infectious. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm certain that you feel this way too. Everybody has levels of it, you know, yeah. um, whether they were there six months or they were there all 32 years. Um, it's such a, a fun onion to peel and to get these layers of all the different perspectives. I'm having just a ball doing this. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And absolutely. I like, it was, it's, it was such a special time for me. It was, you know, and we, we, we can get into it, but it, it really shaped my whole, writing career it taught me how to write and yes. that's not to say it was all it was all rosy or it was all you know a laugh a minute it was really tough sometimes it was really and there were and there were stretches where it was where it was a slog but um but all of that but overall the experience was so positive and such a uh you know it's everything i've done since has been informed by uh what i learned there the people i met there and um uh, yeah, I mean, I, I owe all of my career to, uh, to that show. I, uh, I, I, many times I like to, I like to flip things up. Um, and, and I'm going to do that right now. Uh, I want to talk about other than, okay, the present moment you're on strike and we can talk about yeah. that in a second here, but, but previously, just before the strike, you finished a very cool project that a lot of people don't even know exists. As, as I've, I've, I've said to a few people, oh, I'm getting Chris Harris on. As soon as he finishes blank, he's going to come on here. <laughs> and they're like, I didn't know blank was happening. Uh, what yeah. what was the last project that you were a part it's, of? Uh, the, 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 the fill in the blank is Frasier, uh, yeah. uh, which is uh, amazing. And, and, and in a way it sort of reminds me of, of, of uh, joining Letterman for the first time. It's like, oh my gosh, I get to be a part of this uh legendary thing um the uh the my uh the other writer i wrote the uh who i'm, I'm doing the show with joe cristalli um approached me years ago he'd heard that uh kelsey uh was finally looking to to he's he's ready to to get back and tell the next chapter of, of fraser's life and thus started a many many years process of uh, us, uh, there was a bake-off, which basically 
he uh, he and his team, Kelsey and his team, interviewed several writers, lots of writers, I think more than a dozen, each each having their own sort of version of a pitch of like, okay, here's here's the story. Here's what here's what uh, Frazier's been up to. Here's here's how the here's how things have changed. Uh, and eventually we were. Um, uh, we were so, you know, we were so, we, we, we went down from over a dozen to six and th- from six to three. And then it was, and then we were the last people standing, uh, worked with Kelsey for a long time to hone it, sold it lots of, lots of logistical things in the, in the, in the background that caused yeah. it to be delayed for a few years. But finally this year we, uh, we shot 10 episodes for Paramount plus, uh, it's, um, it's going to, I believe the premiere date is October 12th. Uh, can we and, talk about it? Like, can I ask you some questions, or are the ND, are we in NDA land still? No, I, I, I'll I'll ask away, and if I if I sort yeah. of hem and haw, then um, that's one that's probably just my natural uh, <laughs> interview style. But but two, I'll, I'll let you know if, if there's anything. Uh, that, okay, that we can shot talk. in front of a studio audience. Shot in front of a studio audience, which was such a delight because there yep. is you know there is nothing like that feel of uh, you know you're working without a net. It's showbiz. Uh, a lot again, a lot like late night where you're doing it in front of an audience. Um, yep. So much of TV is you're distant from the people yeah, who you're removed. view it. You know, I've yeah. been on a lot of single camera shows that I, I'm very proud of and I love, but there's just nothing like putting on, it's a, it's a stage play. You put on a new stage play every week and then you bring it to the edit room and and, and bring it together. So it was, a, it was a delight and it was invigorating. Um, you know, and uh, you know, there's, there's some of these things online now. So I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm on side, mm-hmm. but, he goes back to Boston, uh, which yeah. is which is cool. Um, yeah. And and my first question is because uh, I loved Frazier. I there's a, there's a Frazier joke that I have been telling since high school that I just thought it was one of the funniest sitcom jokes of all time. Frazier talked about how uh, in his ex- his his he was in his existential class and he was voted most likely to be. I just love <laughs> that joke. And yes, it was such a smart show. Uh, he's yeah. back in Boston. Is it yeah. still a smart show? It's a, well, <laughs> I, we hope so. We pray to God. <laughs> you know, I I will tell you it was because I you know I've been on any any writer who's uh, been on been in TV for for decades will have plenty of these stories where you know you you think up something smart and then it gets it gets squashed or it gets dumbed down or anything. Yeah. It was such a delight because Frasier, the reputation was already this is a smart show with smart jokes mm-hmm. and the the to go in and being able to tell smart jokes and being able to try let's be clever let's let's uh let's challenge ourselves let's not get away with and by the way like the the flip side is let's set the bar really high for ourselves and so we worked really hard because this this uh you know it's one of the we're fully aware you know that's all on our shoulders this the notion like we're bringing back one of the most iconic beloved well-regarded critically decorated how many Emmys yeah. did that dude win like i mean holy smoke yeah, yeah yeah one fewer than game of thrones i think the show <laughs> the show so there's something like fraser won a total number of emmys that was one fewer than game of thrones <laughs> so that was a big part of the reason kelsey wanted to bring this back because like, damn it we've got to we've got to be the ones we've got to make our mark so <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so we got dragons now. Uh, no, no, but, uh, <laughs> oh, good. No, it was Boston it was, and uh, dragons. <laughs> but the we definitely felt the pressure, and 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 I think in a good way, where it challenged us to say, okay, let's let's tell these smart stories because you know, since you know, in the last twenty years, the multicam world has been pretty. It's been pretty dire, and here's the best chance that anyone has to bring back this classic form like yeah. where, where it's really like this is this is where comedy began on tv and all of the great great shows uh so many of them were this format so uh no we were fully aware like and and loved writing smart jokes like we can mention occam's razor for example you know like and and we don't have to we can just throw it away you know yeah. it's a throwaway joke and and if not everyone gets it great uh but um, but that's true to Frazier, true to his character. And we tried to keep it, um, yeah, make that world um, still still, still be the world where we can we can tell those jokes. 
So exciting. Um, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down any spoiler territory or anything like that. Obviously, people would want to know, hey, anybody from that cheer show gonna be on? It's in Boston, <laughs> but let's let's let them it's October, it's not that far away. Um, this is the part that I'm very, very interested in because I want to go back to how you got to Letterman and whatnot, but yeah. I want to bridge it by saying this. You got to just recently go and write for, like you said, like a, a, an iconic character known for these particular attributes, smart being one of them, and, and and many the list goes on when it comes to Fraser Crane and 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 that character. You got to go in and write for this established uh institution from that realm of entertainment. Not unlike what yep. the writers were doing every day with Dave. And and I mean I can you I can already tell you wanted to do right by Frazier. And every writer that I have talked to has always, I want to do right by Dave. I want to get the voice right perfectly. I want to please him. I want to help him, all of that kind of stuff. And 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 I don't imagine that the experiences in that regard are dissimilar from each other. That must be that must be in the same arena. It'd be, it'd be weird if I said you were wrong. Yeah, you know, I, I, I went in to bring Dave <laughs> No, down. please do. Oh, oh my no, God, no, no, I'm a no. buffoon. I am a buffoon. Uh, you know, I could <laughs> no, be but way no, you're, totally, you're totally right. And there, and there was that. I mean, um, you know, and, and there were differences, of course, you know, but, um, you know, Frazier, I was running it and 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 Letterman, I was just a, you know, a, a cog in this in this already uh, incredibly functioning machine. But uh, but it was also my first job in, in television. So absolutely, there was this, oh, my God, I'm uh, I'm working for Letterman. And, I, and I'll go back a little bit if you want. And I'll sort Please. of like my way in was a little different from from oh, other yeah. been, um, you know, I, I, I'd done writing, but I, I had uh, it was really the break of my life, the, my entire career to get the chance to uh, to apply for Letterman and then to work for him. basically I'd been doing magazine writing and 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 stuff and and really was doing okay but i was also like supplementing my life with doing powerpoint slides for consulting firms and yep. uh and one of the magazines was was a, a, a complete failure but it was uh but it had a cult following and uh the head writer of letterman at the time was uh, rodney rothman was a was a fan of the magazine and he talked to the editor and said hey is there anyone from the from the magazine that uh i should hire because i'm looking to bring in some people who aren't necessarily uh, from TV. Uh, uh, Dave Eggers, the the who's gone on to have a pretty good career himself, and he was the editor of the magazine, said, "Yeah, oh, Dave Eggers, uh, a heartbreaking work of staggering genius yeah. is a phenomenal book for anybody it's, who hasn't read it. Uh, it's uh, it, it 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 lives up to the title. Yeah, um, absolutely. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. It, wow. And, uh, and so I was basically I was invited to apply and. Uh, uh, I, I was able to put together a packet and some of my, you know, the the funny charts and graphs that I've been doing in, in, in the front of magazines. Yep. And a few weeks later, suddenly out of nowhere, I was on a plane and, and I started at Letterman. So, you know, within a month time, I went from, oh, you know, trying to figure out what, you know, if I was going to write another humor book or something like that. And then to suddenly literally walking up to the 14th floor and just you know wide-eyed and and oh my god there's jerry mulligan there there are these people like just 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 sort of awestruck that suddenly i was among this group of of writers so it was a it, it was a very fast um very fast change for me but it's one that i'm i'm incredibly grateful for and one that's like i said shaped me ever since I, I love talking about this because your entrance is, is um, everybody's entrance is unique. Um, you know, how, how, how they ended up in that room, in that writer's room, yeah. um, you, you know, from, from, from interning and then ending up, you know, answering the phones or being hired as a writer's assistant or, or working your way to a writer's assistant and then finally making it in there, you know, all that stuff you got brought in um, to go back to the magazine for just a second. If yeah. you were doing charts and graphs and visual aids within that magazine, visual comedy, yeah. I imagine Rod Rothman was probably like, you know, salivating at the idea. Oh, here's a guy who can bring in extras immediately. We can do desk pieces. We can do this kind of stuff. Or am I off base there? Totally. totally. Yeah, you're totally right. Like he, um, you know, he, he said, you know, he, he looked at some of these charts and said, well, you know, you change the format and that's a top 10 list. Exactly. And, yes. Yeah. And this thing, oh, that could be, that could be something that somebody holds up. Like yeah. we had during the interview, which, um, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I barely 
the the time between hearing about this opportunity and me sitting down with Rodney in New York was was literally less than a week. So I'd hardly even seen the show recently. So I didn't even know what the what the latest things was. So of course we went to top ten list because of course that's the that's the most iconic thing. But that's but a hungry for, beast. Yeah, and and he was a and he was able to say, okay, you can this this brain that's doing these things could be a brain that does these other things too. And yeah. uh, you're totally right. Like that, that little, little bits and pieces and, and funny way of looking at things helped oh, me a yeah. lot. Like, like you think about how many desk pieces Dave has done where he, you know, holds up a chart or a graph or he holds up, you know, a funny Photoshop thing, or he holds up a newspaper or whatever, like, like yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. New stuff. books and, and, and yeah. everything, just anything, anything where it's just like this funny thing. And, and it, by the way, it took me a while. Like it, uh, you know, my first six months, I would say was, really difficult because basically I, you know, looking back, I was playing catch up. Uh, like I just hadn't been thinking about late night TV. I hadn't, been, I hadn't been, you know, I was, I was obviously a fan, but I hadn't, I wasn't, a, I hadn't been watching the show religiously. And so I had a lot of ideas about uh, the show that, that maybe the uh, Dave's inclinations had moved on since then. Yep. And I also, I just hadn't written enough to, to really write through the obvious ideas. You know, so, so much of Letterman is about like, oh, let's take the obvious idea, then let's twist it. And maybe let's twist it again because yeah. they're already expecting that first twist. And it took me a long time to to process that. So the first six months, I, you know, I got things on here and there, but it it took me a while to really lock into um, to to the show. And so I, I was I I am also grateful that they gave me the space to figure it out. Yeah, well, and and we'll get to the we'll get to the two thirteen week periods that were probably mm. pretty stressful for you there. I mean, you know, we yeah. talked about that a little bit, but uh, before that. Uh, had you, what city were you doing the magazine in and had you ever lived in New York before? I had, uh, no, I grew up in Connecticut, so I, I knew New York, but okay. uh, I had not, uh, I'd never lived there. Uh, I was in San Francisco. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I'd basically been there about five years. I was 28 when I started at Letterman. Um, and uh, I'd had a, uh, I'd had a uh, humor book that, that came out that sold about like 12 copies and, yep. and I'm not, I'm not necessarily, <laughs> um, uh, proud of a lot of it, but, it, but I was able to use that to sort of get magazine writing. And I really, I really thought like, Oh, I'll, I'll just keep doing this and I'll keep, um, you know, me, you know, fortunately I moved into TV because the whole magazine industry imploded not too yeah. long after what I started there. Did you write for Give us a, uh, give us a murder. It was, a, a, it was a ESPN a when they had a magazine, when they first started out, I had a bunch of crazy stuff in there and it was, they, they were so funny because you know, I, I had the opportunity to do a bunch of weird, weird charts and, and weird comparisons. And I, I literally told them, you know, I don't know a lot about sports. And they said, that's OK. That's why this is great. That's why we love it. It's just coming. In, like, it's so Fresh weird and stupid. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so uh, I did that. There were, um, I mean, so many, like a, a little bit of Esquire, a little bit of uh, um, I think a little bit of Entertainment Weekly, a little bit of uh um, a bunch of magazines that have gone away, POV and um, things like that. And How about uh, details, that was one of my favorite magazines. Oh yeah, I, I definitely did a bunch with details. I yeah, I had a lot. I of, loved like, that magazine growing up. Yeah, yeah, I definitely did a bunch. I think I had like a, a little regular little column in there for a little while. Yeah, no it's, kidding. It's yeah, not this not is a, organic. Everybody, I did not know this. This just <laughs> popped up. I had no idea. There were yeah, two magazines I like, that I loved. Like, Spin and I feel details. Like I had a regular I little things. like. Is it a is it a blank or a blank? And some of these ended up becoming, um, you know, like top 10 uh, supermodels or Mideast nations. I, you know, I sort of like these were charts that actually ended up becoming useful for top 10 lists every once in a while. But uh, recycle, yeah. recycle, recycle. Oh, totally. Yeah. And, and you know, some of the stuff that that was or was going to be a magazine ended up at Letterman. Some of the stuff that didn't make it into, into Letterman ended up being in TV shows later on. It's it's always fun when it, when an idea that you love comes back. Save um, it all. Get the yeah. notepad out and don't throw those notepads <laughs> away. Exactly. Um, oh, that's fun. OK, so so uh, San Fran to New York. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you had a network there already you had some couches you could surf on or did you like did you find your apartment right away or you I did oh no no it took it took about a month and a half and yeah there were a bunch of couches at the beginning and and uh um yeah it took me a while to find my footing so but uh while working while getting uh, onboarded and working yeah. 
at which, a very fast paced place trying to figure very out fast these paced, very very long hours especially the especially uh during that era uh in fact i you know i, I found it a, a friend from high school that i that i crashed with i remember i remember that first day sort of sort of going through it writing the top 10 lists and um uh, then, you know, as, as I'm sure folks have talked about, you know, the writers all eat dinner in the conference room while we watch the live feed as the show is being taped. I saw a top 10, like one of the a few that I'd written, I think Rodney was feeling generous in the time, like a few that I'd written that day were on the actual top 10 list. I couldn't believe it. Uh, and then after dinner, I go home and I'm watching it on um, I, somehow the television is out of the television is our words that I just wrote a few hours ago. And that was such a mind blowing thing that, that I'd been in, I'd been in that office. I thought it up and now here I am sitting on my friend's sofa uh, watching. And then, then like the next day I came in and Rodney said, where were you? And I had no idea that I, actually everyone else had stayed there till past midnight working on the mailbag for that week. So, so I'd almost got, I almost got fired that first day. Cause I just wandered off after, uh, after, after uh, the show. After the show, figure All right, one. everybody, okay. we're done. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, great. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, oh, was, that's was, hilarious. Was, yeah. Okay, let's yeah. talk about. Okay, um, okay, so your 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 friend's couch and all that, and you figured yeah. your way, all that. But I want to talk about that first day. Who was in? Um, there's a lot of people who 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 like to talk about comedians now, and 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 Dave was just on Neil Brennan's podcast, and he said to Neil, oh, "Who was in your class?" I like thinking about that with comedy writers as well. Who was in that room when you got there originally? Who was the uh, yeah? Who was in when your I, class? When I when I first got there, um, let's see. Well, it was uh, Rodney was head writer, yep. uh, and there are a lot there are a lot of folks that were were there but were not yet writers. Like Lee Ellenberg was uh, still Rodney's assistant. Tommy Ruprecht was still down a couple floors. Uh, the, both of them became, you know, two of the folks I was closest. Prolific. with. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 uh, and some of my best friends there. Um, let's see, there was, uh, I, I can just go down the list. Um, yeah. there was uh, Joe Toplin was in on one side of me, then it was me. Then Steve Young, uh, was right in the office next to mine, which was, you know, that was amazing. Um, mentors right there. Holy oh, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, Carter and Craig were yeah. been there for a little bit under a year and were already superstars. And, and, uh, you know, I, I could fill up like three podcasts talking about how incredible they are. They're such um, great guys too. Just and then great few, writers, few, but great guys as well. Oh yeah. A, a few folks who, who, you know, weren't around for too much, like DJ Javerbaum, who was, who was, who was great. And then went on to, um, uh, went on to John Stewart. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think I'm, I'm missing, uh, I'm missing somebody big, uh, but I'm, I'm sure it'll come to me. Why yeah. and Grossman weren't there yet? Nope, they weren't there yet. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Alex and Pete had just left a, uh, a year or yeah. two earlier. Um, anyway, yeah. Anyway, so it'll come. It, it'll come. Yeah. It was, and it was, and it was really like, wow. Here, this is a, this is yeah, murderer's row. This is, this is amazing. So, um, and and to me the surprising thing was oh yeah there's the morning meeting and here we all are and then and I, and I think others have talked about this then at that time you went back to your office and you got your assignments and you mostly worked on your own so that was that was a you know there there was that in, initial moment of oh my god here are all these legends I'm part of this legendary writing team and then a secondary moment of I'm in my office and I'm... <laughs> now what <laughs> and, yeah type 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 <laughs> Um, and then also, you know, I, I assume back then was the, uh, had it already been established, you know, you have your little, uh, your little, uh, um, uh, catch, uh, outside of the, outside of the door that would constantly be filled with assignments and things, right. You got to open the oh, door. Yeah, oh, the, yeah. The, no, there it is. Yeah. The, the paper sliding under the door, yeah. more, more top tens, uh, two ten, uh, more Kais, uh, three thirty. Uh, yeah, Bob Borden would sort of, sort of uh, walk down the hall and, 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 and deliver them all. So it was, it was, a and, and I'll, I'll say that, you know, in terms of like, that was by far one of the biggest and most important takeaways for me as a writer was, you know, I think up until then I'd been a writer, but it's like, oh, I, I think I've been very precious about what I wrote for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And Letterman was such a great boot camp in terms of, I, yep, that you have to hand in for this next assignment. Yep, and now you have to do for this one. 
Oh, oh, you're not feeling funny today? Too bad. Yeah. You got to be funny anyway. Oh, you, you're you're bummed that uh, this idea that you loved was rejected? Tough. You got to write something that you love at least as much again and again and again. Yeah. Uh, there was so much writing. And, uh, you know, that that was Dave's prerogative. Like, a, you know, less than 5% of what we wrote came close to getting on the air. Uh, one, for quality. <laughs> a lot of the stuff that we wrote wasn't didn't deserve to be. But two, also for Dave's taste or Dave's mood of that day. And... Yeah. So we had to, you had to you had to hit that bullseye, and um, that that was such a great lesson that there's always another joke, there's yeah. always another idea, there's always another uh, way to solve a problem, whether it's a problem of of content or a problem of of, of what to do with a guest or anything like that, uh, because. I mean, and and that's been with me through decades and decades of of crises where suddenly, you know, on a sitcom, oh, the B story sucked. Well, we got to throw it out and we got to, uh, we, you know, we or this this scene, we just played it in front of an audience and it died. We've got to write something right now in the next yep. 10 minutes because, uh, <laughs> you know, it, and so all of that, like that, that lesson from Letterman of don't be precious. You just let go what you already wrote and write something new. Um and you got to make it great. So um, again, it was a hard lesson to learn, but one of the most valuable lessons of all of my uh, TV writing career. I'm so, glad, I'm so glad we're talking about this because there's a question that I've been meaning to ask uh, along this vein here. So when I first started this show, it was um, the the thought that I had in my mind whenever I'd have a writer on and say, hey, you know, was there anything that like you were attached to that you wish would have gone on that never did kind of the path not taken. I'm a big guy. When I get my DVDs, I love going to the deleted scenes and things like that. And it was actually Tommy. I asked the question a couple of times and most of the time it fell flat and, and Tommy and I talked about it and he was like, you know what? The only thing I'm, I, I can remember to answer this question is the stuff that was in like my first couple weeks, because yeah. I immediately learned you can't get attached to anything. <laughs> And because Absolutely. because of because of that so i can tell you something at the very beginning because that was when i was attached but then you learn the skill not to be and the question that i didn't i've never asked that i've wanted to is did that cut into the gratification when something would go on the air and you would see it and you would see it realized and maybe it did get a laugh or two or whatever were you able to be gratified from that or was it like like Young calls it the broken comedy writer uh, mentality, where it's just like, yeah, no, it, it, it's just it's mm -hmm. just there. Like it's a little no, bit. Everything I mean, gets set of flat. You got to hold on to the joy. I mean, okay. if you're if you're, oh, not, doing, you're, that you said if, that, you're if you're not doing it for those moments, then then yeah, don't then then pack it up. You know, yeah. I, I like. If if and I'm not saying that like as a as a matter of like like hold on to this one tiny thing because if you don't love that process if you don't appreciate like yeah you're not going to get all hits you know nobody bats a thousand nobody bats five hundred you know yeah. uh, none of us batted two hundred but um, no there was I, I it, it in a way it made it more precious because you it went you went through that that many more hoops there you um, go there you go. But yeah, it was, I mean, yeah, and, and you're right. And I totally agree with Tommy where there is a little bit of a uh, a Zen mentality that comes through where you just, you know, you you create and then you let it go. You know, you you you, you do the sand mandala and then you wipe it clean and, and you start over. Um, oh but, I'm going to say that to Young. Next time I talk to Young, when he says the, the broken comedy thing, I'm going to say, no, 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 it's not the broken comedy writer thing. It's a Zen comedy thing. That's kind of what Zen it is. comedy writer thing. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, it's so easy for me to act like that. And then, then yeah, like behind the scenes footage of me cursing and punching holes in the wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Later on. But, but no, and, yeah, and there's absolutely like if I went through, because I, I got my old files somewhere in, in some dusty corner of my computer, and I'm sure I could go through things and find tons of things and any writer could tons of yep. things that we wrote and we loved and and didn't end up going anywhere but that's okay yeah you know, look at the amazing things we did do you know uh like i said the deleted seed thing that, that that i that i have in my head um one of the things i want to try and I, I i try and pester walter as much as i'm allowed to without you know getting blocked uh one of the things with that letterman channel i would love to see if possible because there's a lot of extras that got produced all the way Oh yeah. And for one reason or another, it could have been, it could have been, like you say, Dave's mood. It could have been a life event that happened. It could have been something where we just didn't get to it and it never ended up 
There's a yeah. lot of stuff that's been produced that was never released. I would love to see some of that stuff. Got it. It's got to be somewhere. Yeah, but it, every day, you know, let's say we did, we produced four extras and we'd be lucky if two got on the air. Yeah. And and you're totally right. Like sometimes uh, it's just not tickling Dave that day. Sometimes it's like, oh, this overlaps with this one. And he picked he picked A, not B. Um, oh yeah, and that was, that was part of it. So yeah. absolutely, there's so many... I'm sure there are so many amazing things and and probably a bunch of things that that should probably Rightfully stay so. underground yeah. too, uh, at least some of the ones that I did, for sure. Um, you talk about those first. So we've talked about the 13 uh, week uh, yeah. deals that writers get, you know, you're you're um, you get in there. OK, we're going to guarantee you 13 weeks. You find out a few weeks beforehand. Yeah, they're going to re up you. So yeah. you talked about the first six months. That's two of those periods for you. Two of those cycles. Um, yeah, you, you've talked a little bit about some of the things you learned along the way. Um, if, if do you have any more of those? Like, okay, this is why it was tough for the first six months, and I wasn't yeah. sure about things or uh, things that you learned along the way that made the next six months after a little bit more enjoyable. Yeah, I, I think so much of it was just you. Know, it, was, it was almost like learning a, the language. Uh, you know, like like I was the and 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 it was it was a frightening first six months. And and I imagine if you talk to Rodney, he'll, he'll he would say. Yeah, I thought about letting him go. You know, like I ended up having a really uh, good and 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 uh, fruitful uh, time at Letterman. I was there for you know between four and a half and five years. But yeah. but yeah, I, it could have very easily veered off uh, in a, in a different direction. Um, it was really there was a, just a sense of the show that it's hard to explain, but but it took me a while to 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 really adapt to where it's like oh okay this is the kind of thing this is the kind of twist that is working these days or this is the kind of thing that works and it's like uh, a little surreal but not too surreal um something that has a point i don't know there were just like all these like intangible things and uh meanwhile i was writing and i i sort of like blindly hit on a couple things that that happened to work here we go and, okay. and i i i honest honest to god i i think you know when i when i talk about it i i really yeah and, and i had pieces on i had little little things on like oh yep. here's a here's a trailer where they oh where they say too much about the movie you're know, like plenty of like funny little <laughs> little produced pieces that yeah. that kept me going but i feel like there were two hits that i had that were totally random in the first six months um uh, one and totally different one of them was a uh, a big uh, a big elaborate produced piece and another one was just a throwaway on on stage and, and the big elaborate produced one I, I won't go into it in detail but please do it, it, it's <laughs> no no seriously right, I'll, I'll tell That's you why it was really, I exist my friend yeah, I but, that this is I'm the guy to and, tell I love yeah, this and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this because it, it's the greatest thing ever but I'm saying no. this because it, it, it I think what it said was it told Rodney and the other writers okay he's coming around he gets it Give him, give him another, give him another thirteen week cycle. Yep. He's he's finding it. Um, you know, and Carter and Craig were the masters of of Alan Coulter and 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 oh. everything, and they had so many of the 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 best pieces. And I, I know that you the, uh, the the one where he he freaks out in his office is is in my top five gold, moments of all gold time. Standard, yeah, gold standard, gold standard. I love that one. So I, had, I had one piece. This was around when. Um, both Saving Private Ryan and the Thin Red Line came out at the at around the same time. Alan interrupts David. Hey, Dave, uh, I have my own uh, I have my own gritty World War II <laughs> epic. Uh, you want to take a look? And Dave says, oh, "Okay, sure." And we went out. We I think it was um, is it Inwood Park? It's the park near the cloisters up at, up in. And we spent a whole day there. Jerry Foley and I. We we hired extras and everything. Just this giant sort of. Uh, this piece and it was it was a POV camera, shaky cam of Alan in World War II. And he, the the first couple lines are Alan saying, "Oh, I know this war is just, but does it have to cost so dearly?" And then, and then his second in command says, "I know one way you can save money. Just dial ten, ten, four, five, six before." And it was one of those uh, those those cards that were popular at the time. And then the rest, the whole rest of the thing turns into this commercial where, the, like, there's a guy who's 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 bleeding out out of his midsection who says, "Yeah," and and, and the rates are are better. And it's just it's it's and it's kind of tasteless. I, you know, so that's, but it 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 captured something and it it played really well and I think that that one um, that one worked really well for me and then the other the other thing which again is the opposite end of the spectrum but I feel like oh that's that's what Dave's looking for was um, uh, off screen celebrity cameo 
where it was basically uh, Dave's at his desk. Ladies and gentlemen, time for another off-screen celebrity cameo. The, 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 the Chiron comes on screen. The camera holds on Dave. <laughs> and meanwhile, over over on, off camera on the stage, a big celebrity comes out and, and waves to the guy. So you're watching Dave. The crowd goes nuts. <laughs> because here's this famous person here anyways and then a hand reaches in dave shakes his hand but you don't see who's whose hand it is <laughs> then he leaves and that's it and it is a total screw you to the audience it is yeah. a total like like <laughs> like too bad too bad tv audience you're never going to know who it was and um, a treat for those in the ed sullivan theater and we've talked about that like that place had a different energy yes a different like it is so beautiful that Dave got that place after 30 Rock because, oh, again, entirely yeah. unique, entirely. Uh, and so giving them a treat like that, yes. there's an energy that shows up, which translates over to us. At, like, it's it's brilliant. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, how many of those did you do, do you think, Chris? We did a few, and then we did some variations, like out of focus, celebrity cameo. So it, it sort of it went on for a little while. Uh, and. But when it aired, I didn't even know who it was. Uh, I think, I think it was... <laughs> that's even better. Okay, so I got to know the nuts and bolts of it then. Like, yeah. did you shoot that segment with a huge star that was on a certain night and then you showed it on a different night when it was a different star on the show? Like, that, how did that you- was live. That was done live. It was done live. So it was- So a, they brought a... in a new celebrity that wasn't advertised for it. Correct. But Oh, I, oh it, wow. But it was Tony, you know, it was Tony Randall the first time. <laughs> but... <laughs> of course it was. Because, <laughs> because who else? It was, I think it, it should was, be. I think we 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 cycle through like Tony Randall, Regis Philbin. Yeah. Like it was it was all the it was all the classics. Um, but oh, of course they got the big, gi most gigantic applause from the audience. So oh so, yeah, yeah, but the spontaneity of it it doesn't matter who it is as long as they, there's any name recognition, the audience is stoked because it's somebody oh. unadvertised, right? Yeah, exactly. And and I vividly remember one. I was excited that oh my gosh, the thing that I wrote they're 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 doing. You know, again eating our dinner, watching the feed. And then I vividly remember Dave laughing to himself at, at the end of the bit. And I'm like, ah, okay. That's it. That's it. That seems that's, to that's be the for. gold star that most, if not all of you were trying to achieve. If you could get yeah. Dave to chuckle, if you could get like my little moment with Dave too, and I talk about it incessantly, you, it doesn't matter. We don't need to talk. I made him laugh in the Q and A. I made David Letterman oh. laugh. And it's yeah. one of the greatest moments of my life, much to, much to my wife's chagrin. It is like, <laughs> it is above moments that it should not be above for moments in my my top 10 moments of my life. Yeah. She's like, really? Making like, and you guys experienced that every single night or didn't experience it every single night, but you had the hope of it. And, yeah. and Hope, hoping every night. And and yeah, I, I, I you know, in my, in the story I tell in my head, that's when, you know, the clouds started to part and, and, yeah. and people started to, Hey, you want to write, write a mailbag together? You know, like, it, it, like things started to come together and, and, and I was, I was, I was part of the, w would you call that a refillable? Project. Was that a refillable? Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was a refillable. I Your mean, it was refillable. Oh, yeah. We not as it wasn't as didn't do it as often as some of the other ones, but sure. uh, absolutely, but absolutely a refillable. Yeah, totally. Now um, you do it the first time. It's going to like, you even called it a throwaway. Somebody then comes to you and says, let's do that again. Or did you pitch? Let's do it again. I think, um, I don't remember what it had. It just felt like we had those like, oh, here's, here's, we can do another one of the, those. I, yeah. I feel like it became, you know, I, I don't think there was a concrete list or, or maybe there was probably, there was a card up in the, uh, in the head writer's office. Like, okay, here, here's some things that we can here's go some to. go to's. Yeah. We ever need to yeah yeah uh that's a great feeling i i i, I thank you for explaining like that's those are the moments that i love doing this show like selfishly uh i love hearing those moments and then going behind the scenes the alan culture uh moment by the way has been on the lot the uh the, the the letterman channel for sure on somebody's um oh it somebody has oh, either requested funny. it or something but it's also on don giller's uh it's on the the uh, collection that Don Giller put up about Alan as well. So oh, it's, it's yeah. in there. Do, I, I highly recommend, like, for those who like to go down the Don Giller um, uh, rabbit holes, the Alan yeah. Coulter, like Tony Mendez is, is so big. It's like seven parts and each one is 90 minutes. Like, it's so big. Alan's, I believe, is one big collection. And it has, it's, it, it's comfort food for me. Highly oh, recommend going to Don's channel. But I think that that 1-800-Collect one is on... Uh, 
oh, official that's, channel somewhere too. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah, and and by the way, and by the way, Alan was was I know there was a like he, there was nothing he couldn't do. It, it, yeah. He was it was amazing. And 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 by the way, also Don, like as as someone who as a you know to curate and and collect and and be a be a be a, a resource uh, for Letterman. It's really amazing what it is. What and a storybook done. that he gets to work with them now. Like that to me is like the fact that he's. Uh, yeah. You know, in the pants, in pants land, uh, that makes me so, so happy. And it's and now terrible. that, you know, now that our boy Shecky's gone, I mean, yeah. you know, Don is the, um, you know, he is the archive, you know, he's yeah, the living no. archive of this show and he has it all. He knows it all. And uh, I'm so grateful about that too. And every time somebody comes on here and gives Don some love, that's a good thing. I couldn't get him on to come on today, unfortunately, but he comes uh, on these from time to time as a, oh, he as does. a as oh, good. Third. It's amazing. it's amazing. No, yeah, I, we've never. I don't think we've ever um, communicated, but but from afar, I've always just been amazed at at, at at yeah, what a and and it shows like like the not every show gets someone like that, and there's a reason why Letterman has you know there's a reason why we're talking. There's a reason why 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 he has everything. There's a reason why so many of the people who worked for him for years and years still get together all the time and 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 are happy to share those memories. It's pretty incredible. I could not agree more. Uh, this is so great, uh, Chris. I'm having I'm having a ball doing this here with you. Uh, okay, so you you get through the first six months. Um, you kind of move for the next thing. What were some of the things that you kind of gra- were there things that you gravitated towards, or were yeah. you more a utility player? Um, were there any other extras that you kind of put out there that you were you're 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 really really proud of in those next couple of years? Plenty that plenty for sure. And, and, you know, I, 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 I never like, for example, was in charge of mailbag or, or anything like that, but yeah, that I, was Carter. Car- well, Carter and Craig, I mean, you had to, to those take those guys, keys yeah. away from those guys. That would be really tough. <laughs> no way. I, I, I could never have done what they did. It was, it was really <laughs> amazing. Um, I, I definitely was utility, you know, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I looked up to Steve Young as man, if I could ever be a third as, all around funny and useful and good in any situation as as Steve is then then I'll be I'll be fine because he was such a as as a writer who'd been there for a long time but had never but hadn't you know lost a step or hadn't never felt like he was he was going to start to run out of ideas which is just breathtaking to me um I I inherited a few uh a few things that that you know at, at least for a little while became my own um pedestrian theme songs uh i i, <laughs> I was gonna it. ask if you did any musical stuff that's fantastic oh my god yeah and, and i like that that was just such a such a delight we had uh some of my best some of some of the the pieces that i was most responsible for uh that i that some of the pieces that did the best were uh that i was responsible for were um pedestrian theme songs and that that was one of my favorite memories would be the times like going in to record them with Paul and the band yeah. and just watching him. And I'd say something stupid. Cause I, I, I don't, I, I like music. I don't know music, but I'd say, uh, I don't know, maybe something that's a little bit like uh, grand funk railroad. It's like, okay. And he did that. Uh, we'll do this, but Anton did it. Da, 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 da. And then suddenly it sounds exactly like taking care of business. And I don't know how or why, but it's like, it's exactly, it's exactly that song, or or I say, uh, I don't know, maybe Hungry Heart, and and suddenly it's like a, it's like, a, you know, it's it, it, it's a wall of sound and the jingling and the jangling, the and he's such a genius, and it would, it would just take him like a fraction of a second to know exactly how to, or or I'd say Busby Berkeley, and 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 suddenly it would sound like this old old tiny thing, and I I just to to this day like just in awe of his ability and to and his like just there's it's a genius like i've never seen before. absolutely the greatest ear in in music in our generation i mean oh you know God. he's iconic in so many ways not just like it's it's the ensemble um obviously led by paul and whatnot but i mean like will and i yes. have, have have started we started to communicate quite a bit like we talked like three times on the phone last week and and and, and the awe that he feels for paul and here oh is like one of the Rolling Stone, you know, one of the greatest bases of all time, one of the great biggest studio musicians. And yeah. Will Lee like is in awe of Paul. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, it's beautiful to see that you got to see that up close and personal. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. And, and to like to think of all of that genius being yeah. used 
to compose like a 15 second ditty about a guy who gave the camera the finger. You know, it's just like, it's just, it's just amazing. So um, that was uh, pedestrian theme songs. I, I loved doing, I did, uh, I was in charge of Dave's video collection for a while, which was oh, the, that's the, cool. ugly, the ugly stepchild of Dave's record collection. But um, that was, uh, that was, I spent so many hours just watching the, the most, the ridiculous, crazy or boring or whatever old vhs tapes looking for did, those did shecky ever help you with that did you and rick ever he did he had a few that? he shecky had a few and um definitely and yeah. uh and and the folks in research too by the way uh oh nick, sure yeah uh, who's gone on to i think uh, make a make a great uh festival out of it um <laughs> but um yeah, so I did, I did, I did uh, that, and then um, you know the second half after about a year and a half, two years there, I started doing the remotes, um, both the both the the local remotes like fun with a stopwatch, fun with bullhorn, and then the 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 travel ones like uh, I inherited Biff Henderson's America from Eric Stangle once he and Justin uh, moved up. Elevated, to yeah. Yeah, uh, did some sports things, did some, uh, and and I love those were those were always a delight, always a. Delight. Did you go on the road with with that yeah. stuff? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did. I think I did three or four small towns. Um, yep. Did a Super Bowl. Did at least one Super Bowl. Um, few other, few other, um, few other trips. Yeah, I, I did a Grammys. Yeah, I mean, and it's like it's amazing. You 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 again. The the. It, what I always tried to do, and I'm not saying I was always successful, but always have like a little piece of the brain, like, like looking around going, look at what you're doing. Yes. Okay. You're getting yep. paid for this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, just, I was going to ask about if you were able to be present during those moments. So I'm glad you're talking about this. I, I tried as much. And by the way, I constantly have tried to do that throughout because there it's a is, life, it's a, it's a life secret being present. That's a, that's a secret. Yeah, of life it's, right and there. especially just we're, I'm getting paid a good amount of money to make people laugh, to bring joy to people. And that, and that's true, not just at Letterman, but at, at, at my career since then. Yep. And, um, you know, it's, it's not always easy. It's, it's sometimes very frustrating. Things don't turn out the way you, way you want. But again, like I'm spending my day laughing with other people, putting together things that, that hopefully make other people smile. That's amazing. What a, what, how, you know, the, we, um, I had a show with that, with Carter and Craig that ended up being a, a very troubled show and ended up getting shut down early. Scott Foley um, was one of the actors in it. And when we called him to say that we, we were shutting down, he took a beat and then he said, well, how lucky are we? And oh. I, I just, I just, I've always remembered that sentence because it wasn't even how lucky were we? It's like, how lucky are we? We, yeah. we get to do something like this, whether it succeeds or not. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it brings joy to people. Uh, but either, but either way, look at, look at what we're doing. So. Uh, you, you are preaching to the choir, sir. And I'm talking about even like right now um, doing this show. I've got a lot of plates that are spinning in my life. Like I, all sorts of stuff that are going on. This show is one of the, one of the times where I get really hyper present like and grateful at the same time right. present and grateful are those two things if you can put those two things together yep. for those moments you're kind of you're kind of an immortal like like right now i'm feeling that doing having this conversation about this topic doing this show it that's absolutely how i feel how lucky right. am i and it doesn't matter the outcome of this show at this point does not matter it's the yeah. moment itself that it's, is just it's, so this beautiful. Is, this is the this is the reason. This is the yes. this is the thing. Yes, Everything, yes. that's totally I could not agree more. Um, you know, uh, talking about the video collection there for a second. Um, that's really neat too. Like the idea of coming up with something that became a refillable, but also being bestowed something that's had some tradition on the show. Um, that's kind of a, a you know talk about those gold stars. That's another type of gold star too that you're entrusted with something that's been around either to invigorate it or to continue it that's kind of a neat thing as well oh yeah very much and and you know i i was i you know when i when i got the assignment i you know i went back and i looked at the old ones and i said okay i'm i'm getting a sense and and steve young again was was super helpful with like here's here's what really tickles dave here's here's the kind of stuff that that maybe not so much and and yeah it was like that it's such a funny it's such a funny task because 
that um, video collection specifically, because you can't even like listen to it while you're, you really have to watch. Yeah. And so you spend, you just sort of spend hours watching through these just mind, like flower arrangement and manners and this and that. And you're just waiting for, waiting for An that eight thing. second clip of it. Yeah. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes it's like, oh, this is a, this is a transcendental massage. Okay. This is, <laughs> this is going to have something good in it. So sometimes, you know, that you, sometimes you're, you're, you're very hopeful. Uh, and other times you're just like, I don't know. And uh, you're just looking for, yeah, looking for that gold nugget in that. That's one that I think they could probably get away with doing a super cut on. Like, like I loved um, like Tommy doing great moments in presidential speeches. And mm. then, and then when the, the official channel put up the uh, they put up basically a super cut of it, they did a, they did a, like a oh really long version of it where typically on the show, you'd have one moment kind of a thing, yeah. but you know, they did uh, the, the, the video collection thing, I think probably is one that could probably have a super cut too. Um, and, and what the thing I love about that one uh, in particular maybe even more so than the record collection is the X factor. And the X factor of course, is having the greatest broadcaster who happens to be also one of the wittiest broadcasters yeah. of all time who gets to throw out. And, and, and this is one of the details that I got to ask about. Um, Cause by that point was Dave still doing where Dave wouldn't have been doing rehearsals at that point. Right. He stopped. Um, when did he stop? Was he like was it... during your run? Did he stop? He, he stopped during my run. Okay. I, I remember, um, I think it might have been he might have stopped after you know our 9-11 break and just never never come back i feel I like think that's, yeah that, that seems to be around the time if it wasn't the time it was around the time yeah and i'm curious because you know rehearsal that's he's going to see the video at that point yeah. and know or maybe you have approved it or whatever and then at the live show or the the taping of the show which feels live you know that's where the juice is there. He's his, it's been going on in his mind. Um, you know, and then, and then suddenly something spontaneous comes out that you're like, Oh, and he just makes it that much better. Um, yeah. Versus him not rehearsing you, not seeing him see the reaction of the video. That must've been, <laughs> is that, is that something that, that was, uh, that was an adjustment for you? Uh, like, or like, or do I have it wrong? Yeah. I mean, he, it was very, when he was, I do remember like, that first year when he when he was still rehearsing it was it was all fairly formal so you know he and rightly so he, he was he was saving the the show for the show yeah um so you know there wasn't a huge difference between him trying it out uh, at the desk and circling and saying let's do better than this or just getting the notice that he he would like some alts on on whatever joke he was saying so i don't know if there was a, a huge substantive difference um yeah. But um, but no, and and half the time, you know, obviously we wrote these the little quips for him to say, and and sometimes he had a couple options, and a lot of the time he'd just say something that was uh totally his own, and it was or just talk with Paul about it, and it was a hundred times more entertaining than whatever silly thing we'd have come up with. Uh, that must have been its own kind of uh, fun around the table. Whenever he would come up with one of those things that was just you know, <laughs> jaw dropping or whatever. I could just kind of see all you guys and gals like kind of just go, oh, you know, like that's, a, <laughs> that's a, he's, yeah. he's, he's the best. It's Mozart. Like when it comes yeah. to that stuff. It's, exactly. He's there's, there's no comparing. And, and, you know, if you take in the words that he said and put them on the paper, you wouldn't think they're anything special, but guess what? He knows himself better than anyone else. He knows the audience better than anyone else. And, and yeah, that thing that I'm not even sure if that, like that, well, we had a hard joke and that's a half joke. Nope. Half joke was the right call. You know, like, yeah. like that, that was a real, that was a real reaction or talking to Paul about it. That's, that's the real thing. And that, that was, you know, I think that was a little bit, there was always a little bit of a contrast between the writer's mentality and uh, that of Dave. And I don't know if folks have talked about this before, but you know, we, as writers, we, we wanted our written stuff, of course, to be on the air. Yes. And there were many times and and for and depending on the stretch there would there would sometimes be it would sometimes be frequent and sometimes it would be infrequent when dave would decide you know we have this prepared thing sometimes you'd see the stack of uh, new books sitting on his desk and instead he'd talk about his trip to the dentist or he'd decide to talk to a one of the one of the folks on uh, uh one of the folks on staff or or yep. just shoot shoot the bull with with paul and 
from the writer's point of view, that was always a little bit difficult, yeah. but, uh, but, you know, with 20 years perspective and, and, and more, and I think we all understand that, well, of course, that's what made the show great was, you know, these insights into uh, Dave's life and the, the, the personal, uh, not just touch, but the, 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 his his own life that he that he added to the show, yeah. Uh, because anybody could do. Oh, here's the, here's this funny new product, but uh, but that's what made the late show special was the fact that Dave would you 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 would you would go into his own life or his own psyche every once in a while. You would you would feel like him just like I just want to talk to somebody for real right now. I you know I, I don't want to I don't want to do a comedy bit. I, I just want to just want to reach out to somebody. I just want to talk to and and I feel I think that's you know. Again, like we as writers, we were focused on the written, but yes. um, I, I think it, it took a little bit of stepping back to realize, well, that's a that's an important part of the show, but it's not the show. The X Factor is always Dave in so many yeah. different ways, like totally. in so many different ways. Totally. You know, whether it's the monologue emphasizing a certain place and not, you know, looking over at a certain time to a certain staff member, like you say, uh, during guest segments, you know, I mean, obviously things are prepared, but then. You know, the segment producer, they give lines to, to 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 the guest and all that. He wants to be the best that he can. And then Dave deciding to be that X factor and taking it in a completely <laughs> different way, right? And the yeah. same with comedy pieces, like you say. Um, I, I Carter Carter talks about that in his second book, in the War for Late Night. You know, he talks about that, the fact that he would go off on these tangents more and more. But I'll yeah. tell you from a from a from an enthusiast perspective, my very favorite segment of that show, of late show was the moment Dave finished the monologue and then after they 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 changed it to the commercial break rather than Paul playing him to the desk. Um, yep. And then after the commercial break, that first segment after yep. the commercial break was my favorite part of Late Show, no matter what was going on in my life. I loved, I loved that. And sometimes, like you say, it was, it was a potpourri. And the moments yeah. where, you know, things went off the rails, um, this is leading to a question. I think your answer is going to be no. But I don't know that for a fact, because even like during your run, texting was a thing, but it wasn't like it was. Uh, I was talking to somebody about the moment. Do you know the moment where the show went off the rails because of of, of playing the Eagle song? Do you know about that? Oh, wait, which which moment was that? That was uh... so they were going to there were some people in the audience uh, during the Q&A that wanted them to play an Eagle song, I think is what it was. And then it got onto the show where they're like, Dave was like, can we play an Eagle song? Can we not play an Eagle song? And Nancy from the podium got involved and said, don't do it. It's going to cost us all this money. And, <laughs> and, and chaos happened. And it was just this chaotic moment. So one of the writers just during that segment reached out to me and he said, hey, during that segment, just so you know, around the writer's table, uh, this is what was going on. And and we were like messaging, we were texting Bill Sheft from the from the from the moment this is real time during the show. Like, and it and the stuff we were texting him ended up getting being part of the dialogue and all of that kind of stuff. My so my yeah. question, which I think the answer is gonna be no, I don't think this happened very often, but was yeah. there ever a time where you're around the table, the show is going on real time? And suddenly you guys are called to attention to contribute somehow? Yeah, I mean, de definitely a few times. Um, okay. I'm trying to, I, I feel like there, every once in a while there was a crisis one where <laughs> we, you know, we're, we need something for this guest or this thing, or this thing just fell through and and we need an ending. I, and then a few times, which were the more fun times were, um, there was an idea and, and, and especially like, oh, Let's take this thing that happened at the top of the show and and turn it into a top ten. And I, I specifically remember one, not because it was the best, but but just because I remember that sort of feeling. And it was early on in my in my uh, in my time there. There was I I can't tell you what the beginning was, but it was Dave yeah. and I think it was just Dave and Paul joking around and and how how military people always always end every sentence with with sir. And, um, oh. and, and it was, and basically Rodney called up to the, to the, to the room and said, okay, we're going to do a new top 10. It's like punchlines to jokes they tell in the military. And it was all just like, it was all just, you know, uh, I, I can't think of a single uh, joke any, but you know, like, like, no, no I get, I get the sir, you know, Perfect. yeah, but like, sir. And it was just, yeah, it was just, uh, yeah. So it was um, that was a great moment where we we're just like, what are some punchlines that everyone knows? Let's throw on sir at the end to get to the other side, sir. 
<laughs> you get to the other side, sir. Exactly. The, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was probably on the list. Um, <laughs> and it, so that was just like, we were just shooting them. I, I think I, I'm sure it was Bob Borden transcribing it and sending it to Rodney and, and then running down to, uh, to the, to the Chiron booth and, and having the person, you know, so it was, it was this mad dash just to add that spontaneity. And I, and I, I remember, I remember playing incredibly well because it's, it's both a joke punchline and you get the, sur it's like two jokes in one. And the callback. Yeah. The callback to, and, and it shows back to something how that fresh just the show is. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's when those moments were not as, as frequent probably as they, as they were in late night uh, on the earlier show. And, um, and they were, you know, you were working without a net. Sometimes they would work, sometimes they wouldn't, but um it was it was always a great it was always a delight and and yeah you boy you felt like you were part of the part of the team when that thing happened um did you get into the fun facts book was that your time or is fun facts book after your time mm -hmm. i was not a part of fun facts that was after that okay yeah. okay yeah uh, those moments that you just described there are were my as a viewer my very favorite moments any time that any time that i had to ask myself okay was that planned or not <laughs> because now doing this show, it seems like like it was like a coin flip. Many times oh, they yeah. were planned, did not look planned whatsoever, looked spontaneous, which is the magic of being able to write something that isn't spontaneous but make it look spontaneous is just what a what a talent that yeah. is. But yeah. then there was the X factor of something where it no, it wasn't planned, but we either pivoted <laughs> or reacted or did whatever. And we, and we just went with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it and it seemed like just those are uh, the, the that was one of the moments. I think that's a mood of the show that folks loved so much is you don't necessarily know what's going to happen, and um, yeah. and it, and it felt that way, no matter if the entire show was on rails or not. Uh, when it, when the yeah. show was its best, that was one of the the attributes of it. Absolutely, and that and that feeling, cause, which is which is like being with a great group of friends. You know, it's like it's like the if if in minute forty you're calling back to something that happened in minute five. Yep. Uh, it's just like a group of great people hanging out, having a couple drinks together. You know, you're like, oh, it, it, this this joke came back around and one last time and you're laughing again at this thing. Those are yeah, those are always the best moments when when it feels like it's just one uh, one show and, and you're you're part of this special group that gets to laugh at this because you were you remember what it's referring to. I, it was always great when we could capture that feeling. Yeah. Um, in the thumbnail for this episode, and what we'll do is we'll put the picture up in the in the Facebook group. Hey, everybody, we've got a Facebook group. You can join the Letterman Podcast Facebook group if you want to see some of these little extras. Um, the picture of you, it's it's right near the end of your run in your office. Oh, yeah. Uh, the back corner, um, there is a gigantic <laughs> bat. I think this is the only time I've maybe used the word bat on this uh, show. <laughs> a vat of barbersol with gigantic yes. combs and 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 uh, barber uh, uh, uh apparatus inside of that vat um is this a bit that hit the air is this uh... oh, it, 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 absolutely i'm almost certain it hit the air it was uh it was my first october uh at letterman and it was uh halloween costumes uh um, oh, okay great yeah so, and it was it was yeah the 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 old the the jar of old barbicide at the at, at the barber shop and so i i know I, I remember seeing a kid wearing it so i know it at least made it into the run through um and it was, it was, yeah, it was just so ridiculous. Why would a kid wear it? And I did try to, I remember I almost destroyed it because that, uh, that Halloween, I didn't have a costume. I thought, oh, I'll just wear the Barbicide costume. And of course <laughs> I was like, I, I was about eight times too big for, for an almost just wrecked the whole thing. But, um, you know, that was, that was, uh, that was, uh, that was, uh, one of the, yeah, that was probably the first, the only Halloween costume I got on that first day, that first uh, year I was there. And so, you got to work with my buddy Sue Hum. Oh my gosh, amazing! Isn't she great? <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I mean everyone there, like the I can only imagine, yeah, you because know, we're the writers, so we're we're where it starts. But there are so many other steps and and so many things that so many other people that need to contribute before it gets on the air. And I can only imagine what it's like to be someone like Sue Hum where you suddenly get this call at, at, at three 30. Okay. We need a, you know, whatever. We need a Michelin man costume in two hours. And yeah. uh, uh, it's, 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 there's nothing more important than this. It must be, it must've been so nerve wracking and that's true for set design and, and, and uh, all sorts of other, uh, you know, things that, things that happen. Yeah. Uh, the, the pace. And it, this is again, why, why I think, 
you know shows like maybe not this particular show but shows shows like this are so important is 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 taking these moments the way that uh, the analogy that i've used um you know frequently is that you're mining for gold every day and it's a frantic day you get the gold and then your goal is to drop the gold and 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 it not get you know youtube rose up you know near the end of the run but many times these things that we're talking about have never been seen again and and, oh, and yeah. it's gold like like literal gold it's yeah. so great and, and that, no, we just cast it aside never to be seen again and it's so great that you and i have grown up in a time where these things that were forgotten as long as the tapes weren't weren't erased uh you know we can go back and revisit them and and it, it yeah. triggers all sorts of nostalgia and fun and never mind the entertainment value of it um because, very very, yeah, very special to be able to do that no absolutely and and it did especially because it did feel for a while like okay yeah you're you're you do something oh that played great or it played okay or it didn't play at all and it doesn't oh now it's gone and yep. now it's now it's going to be forgotten within a couple of days no one will talk about it there's no youtube yet um and uh no it, it is wonderful and you know that you're 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 bringing you're bringing it back yourself you're you're keeping that alive and, and you know I, otherwise i'm not talking about these things yeah. <laughs> so, you, I, so you all seem to want to like it's funny like people are like how are you getting the guests that you're getting? And I swear to God, Chris, it's just like, just like with you and I, Hey man, you want to talk about Letterman for a while? And in the enthusiasm is like, other sure. than a few people who are very, very, very uh, shy about coming on camera and things like that, they've got yeah. some, you know, they, but at the same time, there's a few of those where I've had these amazing conversations with on the phone and one, they just won't come on camera and do it. Um, <laughs> everybody seems to want to talk about it, especially now that yeah. you're not in the, in the mine anymore do you still yeah. dream about it though do you still get the dreams of the i think yes i i do um i mean i tie them in with you know it's 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 like high school stress dreams you know it's like yeah. uh it, it it's like the the test that you forgot about um every once in a while they'll be like i feel like for a while my dream was i'm going back to work there again and yep. it's day one again and i've got a and things are different now and I'm gotta, and I have to sit down and think about funny bits for tonight's show. And that sort of, I wonder like behind it, it might just be like, can I still do that? Is my mind nimble yeah. enough after, you know, a quarter century to go back and, and, and do this on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, I, I'm, I've done a, uh, a good job in my own head, at least of transitioning from that sort of day to day, every day you have to think of something amazing to, okay, it's a, it's, it's episodes. And, and this week we have to do a show, you know, yes. as, opposed to, as opposed to tonight. And so I think part of, probably part of what's going on in my psyche is do, do, can I still, can I still perform every single morning like that? Like just get up and think of something funny. Um, but yeah, I, I, I definitely had a few of those dreams where it's like, yeah, okay, I'm back. It's day one again. <laughs> 10 minutes till the top 10 and we need three more. Go. <laughs> you know, oh shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and like, I appreciate you giving of your time here and whatnot. And I want to have you, I want to have you back on, especially I, I, we, we, we did it with uh, Jeff Martin, and Jerry Mulligan. We actually had them on at the same time. And oh. those shows are, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, get one with the two Steves, Young and O'Donnell and, and whatnot. Um, oh, I want to, I want to get you back with maybe with some other writers. I want to get you back on yourself just to talk about more memories now that we've built the rapport. Um, but Definitely. let's talk about, you know, kind of any other uh, highlights that you have, but then moving to the end and what you moved into afterwards. I think it's worth noting some of the other cool things that you've had a chance to work on throughout your career sure. and what, what Letterman was that, uh, you know, that, 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 that preparation zone for you yeah. to then jump out of that plane and, 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 and fly some other places. Um, so, so, so yeah, how did, how did it kind of, uh, end? Uh, did you get another offer somewhere else and it was yeah. just time? It just felt like it was time or, or, yeah. and then what it, happened? It, it, more than anything else, it felt like it was time. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, I'd been there and, and that's, um, you know, I think some people find the, that late night and that comedy variety world to be like, okay, this is it. This is, this is what I've always wanted. Yep. And this is great. And that's, that's awesome. I think I felt like I just, yeah, a little bit, a little bit used up. And I think, and I think, uh, you know, like I was sort of referring to before, I, I, I wanted to, I was enjoying the remotes and the, the three and four minute pieces 
more than anything else. And yep. it really sort of got me thinking about like, oh, what about what about half hour? What about screenplays, yeah. which I never really got into, but 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 let's move on to telling stories, hopefully being just as funny and 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 irreverent as um as on the show, but but maybe let's tell a, let's tell some stories. And so yeah, I moved out to um uh moved out here to LA and uh did the usual thing of working on a bunch of uh uh, half hour shows and, and the, uh, you know, the first few didn't click. And then, uh, my friends Carter and Craig called me up and said, Hey, we're, uh, we think we're going to get a green light on this, uh, this show about a group of friends in New York city. And, uh, we'd love for you to write on it. And I said, Oh my God, that would be, that would be a dream because I know that they're the, you know, most funniest, most brilliant, and also most good natured people I know. And so I, I hopped on to How I Met Your Mother and um, worked with them on that for for the entire nine uh, nine season run. Um, and then since then, I've, uh, you know, I've run some shows. I, I've worked on some shows. Uh, I did a couple of years running uh, the show called Acapulco for Apple TV. And then yeah. coming back full circle, uh, just recently finished uh, the first season of uh, first 10 episodes of the new Frasier, which I'm excited for folks to see in October. Um, how I Met Your Mother. Let's go back to that for a second. Yeah. And and um, there must have been for you in particular um, a lot of McGee's memories that ended up oh, yeah. in that show. And uh, my my goal is I'm I'm hoping that when you know Rupert has his retirement thing, um, and we'll we'll talk about that off air when it's going to happen, whatnot. But when that happens, I want to go back, and if possible, I want to hang out with a bunch of you guys at McGee's. Um, because oh I mean, I can only imagine, yeah, the conference room table would have been a lot of fun. No question. The, during the crisis <laughs> moments, no question, but boy, I mean, I've hung with, 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 uh, comedians in green rooms before the hang at McGee's after must've just been yeah. I iconic in your, in your, in your, uh, from, from, from a friend's perspective. Uh, what a, yeah. what a place that and you guys translated it really well in how I met your mother. Oh, so. they yeah they I mean it it was so it 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 felt like I mean that felt like the bar it was amazing yeah. just the wood and the and the colors that they that they used. Um, yeah, I mean the the only caveat is that sometimes we were just so exhausted after that two episode run yeah. that 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 it might not have gotten as crazy as as uh, or I might have left before it got too crazy. I don't know, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> But it was it was definitely that great release at the end of the night, and everyone were there. Jerry Foley there, and and Pat Farmer, and you know, and whoever's yeah. there is just hanging out, and 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 we're we're uh, you know, r rightly so, letting off some steam after another uh, another week of shows. Um, yeah, I I love how um, you know Carter and Craig did such an amazing job. One capturing that. Um, that feel and just that time in general where, you know, you're single, you're in New York, you're, you're, you're dating. It's you, you're this, the, the narrator telling the craziest stories that he can think of. And some of them, you know, some of them coming from our time there and some of them, are, you know, we're each pulling our different, uh, our different stories from different places. Uh, yeah. It was, uh, that, you know, that one, two of Letterman and, and then how I met your mother was, uh, you know, I'll be all right if that never gets matched. It was it was pretty incredible. The thing I love about that show is is like you said, um, it was in a in an environment of you know the Office and Arrested Development and all these other you know amazing shows in their own right. But again, breaking from tradition, and 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 your show, um, you know, had that, you know, you know, I think about Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld and how every these little everyday moments became entire episodes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, you guys did such a clever job of keeping the original sitcom, um, you know, formula relevant by, by adding those little elements with the narrator with, and, and, yeah. and drawing from these moments that you had, it was, it was, uh, you know, a really, really special show in a time where a lot of those types of shows were going away. Yeah. And, you know, and this is all credit to Carter and Craig because it, it's, it's their show, but I, but I was so but I, but I was happy to find a show and be on a show where it's like, oh, I get this. And this is this is exactly my sensibility, too. And you're right. It, I think there's a there's a commonality with Letterman where it's like, let's play with the form. OK, we know we know we know what we're supposed to do. And we're not going to we're not going to we're not here to, you know, uh, we're not anarchists. We're not going <laughs> to we're not going to throw everything away. No. What, what can we do to play? With, what, what, let's bend it. Let's just bend yeah. it. 
let's yeah. let's 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 make it fresh by just like playing with some things on the sides and i feel like that's what you know uh, dave was had been doing ever since late night and that's um that's what carter and craig did and what i got to be a part of uh doing uh with how i met your mother was okay let's take that for let's take that sitcom let's add this narrator oh and now the narrator can sort of play around oh now we're not going to talk about uh smoking pot we're going to say i was eating sandwiches uh sure. now i'm going to completely forget what this b story was about and <laughs> so the actors are just going to stand around on stage while we you know like like again we're still telling we're still being a, a half hour show yeah. but we're having fun with the conventions and I, so much of that was what dave was about for uh, spanning spanning both of his shows was let's have fun let's have fun with this um let's not just do the thing that we that people are expecting yeah um let's find the fresh uh form fresh way to poke fun at the form too uh could not agree more um i've only got a couple more things that i've got uh that i want to ask you on i know what i'm going to go out on but uh before that let's talk about the writer strike a little bit because yeah. at the end of the day um, you know, we've been, we've been talking, I've been talking about it as much as I possibly can. I support you Thank guys you. in every yeah. single way that I possibly can, which is the only thing I can do is talk about it. Um, yeah. did you, were you, uh, a part of, oh, you might've just missed the, you didn't, you didn't have a writer strike when you were at Letterman, did you? You had one at How I Met no. Your Mother? No, we had one at How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Um, yeah. so this is your and... second writer, major writer strike since you've kind of gotten into the business. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and this feels, you know, I, I think the conventional wisdom is, is that, that that strike the the one before this one you know we we gained some ground but but we lost some ground too and 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 we didn't quite uh, you know hope this strike is is it feels bigger and more important yeah. um in a way and it does feel very existential and that's yeah. that's both the writers and the and the actors and uh because there are a lot of things coming to a head and you know i i can obviously you know what side i'm on uh so you know hey everyone... i'm right with you this show <laughs> is on that same side so let's just great awesome let's just yeah, use that I... side and other people can talk about other sides if they yeah, want to and, this and is this is important absolutely yeah there and you know i'm fine this isn't about the the you know most of the issues don't impact me directly and i'm grateful for that but but it is the way i um was able to rise through the ranks the way i was able to learn how to how to write a show, how to put together a show, how to edit, how to produce, uh, that it allowed me to then go on to run other shows and and teach other people how to do it. The whole system is broken down now. There's no, um, people can't make a living um, as a low or even mid-level writer these days because of the, you know, it's eight episodes and then you wait a year and a half and then you have another eight episodes and, and people aren't interested in hiring you because you're in first position to the first show. You know, it, it's, it's, it's getting complicated and Byzantine. Um, and then also people, because of that, also people don't have the experience on set that they used to have. They don't have, um, you know, they don't get to be in the edit room because the, the writer's rooms have been isolated and from, uh from the sets yeah. um there are you know the, the writers guild contracts were established with the idea that there are seasons and you know most episode most shows will be 13 episodes or 22 episodes or something and yeah. unfortunately writers are being held to contracts to that's to a, a system where that's the assumption but but the reality is that people are getting paid for far fewer episodes and being made to work much, much longer. Um, so, you know, their per episode fee is the same, but they're only writing half the episodes in the same amount of time. And so they're getting paid half. Um, it's a, it's a broken system. And, you know, the, the small amount of soapboxing I'll do is that I do feel like this is uh, an issue in a lot of other industries, not just the Writers Guild, not just the Screen Actors Guild, but there is a growing concentration at the very top. The income disparity is problematic. And um, I think some of these issues that that we as a guild are trying to address now are issues that are, um, you know, I, I hope that I hope get addressed in, in lots of other industries, not just ours, because I do feel like we're we're leaving people behind and that's um uh that's hurting our country 
overall. Uh, and then the last thing I'll say is that AI, of course, is a whole other <laughs> giant issue. Um, and um, also, obviously, that needs to be addressed too. The you know they're the you just need to look at the studio's proposals. Oh, we'll pay an actor for a day, and then we own your likeness and right uh, in perpetuity. Does that sound fair? I don't think so. No. I don't think it sounds fair. So uh, there is a we're at a crisis moment with that too, where I, it does feel like the studios think that they can just push their way through and get everything that they want. And uh, as writer, as writers, we were so grateful that the that the Actors Guild also recognized that this is a this is a crisis moment and. Yep. Um, that's why we're, you know, proud to be picketing, uh, with them every, every day, every week. You done any, uh, done any fun ones lately? <laughs> uh, no, we did. A, we had a Harry Met Your Mother one a few weeks ago, which was great nice. to see, uh, see some of the old folks, uh, yep. the writers and actors and, and Pam Fryman, the director came out. Um, uh, I haven't seen, uh, haven't done any of the costume ones. It's not quite my style, but, uh, <laughs> but it's been great to see a lot of old uh, friends as we uh, as we go out there and uh, make sure we're shown and heard. Um, I'm, I, I really appreciate you, you know, you know, pouring out, um, you know, some of these some of these things right now, uh, because I, I think most people just don't realize what you're talking yeah. about. Some of the things that are that are that are real issues and and you shouldn't have to be some sort of a, uh, you know, you shouldn't have to be self-financed to be able to be a creative. And, and, yeah. and unfortunately that's what's happening now. People who are, who are creatives, they want to be creatives. They want to be a, have a career, put food on the table, being a creative. It is getting so difficult to do that. And you talk about this disparity that's happening. You know, it shouldn't be just that wealthy people can afford, can, can, can do yeah. this because the people who aren't are usually the ones with the better stories. <laughs> you know, they're, they're the ones that, <laughs> Um, exactly. You know, and, and 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 so everybody should be able to do this, whether it be music, whether it be writing, whether it be acting, all of this stuff, and be able to do it in a way that they can make a living at it. And and uh, absolutely, you know, and that's thank a fair you. Minimum. Yeah, and thank you for for being a voice. Uh, I mean, the more the more people talking about this, and and the more people sort of, uh, you know, making clear making the issues clear the, the the better and that's one of the big differences between now and uh even last strike social media was not what it is today and the fact yeah. that we can uh through podcasts like yours and not to mention all the other uh channels and sites and and social media the that we can uh, make sure that the studios aren't um aren't defining the terms aren't aren't uh you know aren't aren't the ones sort of shaping the story like they like they were able to do uh, in times past. So thank I, you for that. I'm a big personal development guy. And, and, um, not too long ago, I guess about a year and a half ago, I read a book called rework and it's about, uh, the book itself was a side effect of this company that went through a bunch of growing pains and, and, and very uh, successful software company. And the book was a side effect of, of, of just basically noting down this journey that the company had taken. And, and one of the things that, uh, one of the founders of this company, uh, and, and wrote in this book, put out there was part of the way that reason that our system is broken. Like the studios themselves, okay, but if they're owned by a corporate entity where that studio is just literally a line on a ledger, yeah, and 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 you take out the you know the human aspect of of what everything is, that's where the problem happens. Even the some of the the, the studio heads, you know, they want everybody to be in a good spot. It's you know we saw it happen in our life when 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 uh you know all of these broadcast companies were purchased by these major corporations. Is it going to change the nightly news? Well, we've seen what happened there. Is it going to yeah. change entertainment? And, and we're seeing that happen right now. And the premise in this book, the guy was talking about how, you know what, if we're profitable, that's great. And if we're continuing to be profitable and, and, and that's, that's great. Like more like, and, and there, and well profitable, you know, like, like yeah. we're, in, we're, in, we're well in the black. Um, It's the, the brokenness of business is the drive to be more profitable every quarter yes. versus being able to accept, you know, obviously inflation and things like that, but accept a status quo of we're, we're paying our people. Well, we are putting more and more and more money into the coffers to reinvest into the company to whatever, to keep, to pay back the shareholders, whatever that is. The broken part is the drive to make it more profitable every single quarter. And that's where, yes things start to break down and the human part starts to go yes. away. 
I agree a hundred percent. And I'll just go even further, like that, that drive for that, that, that it's the next profit uh, report. That's the most important because that's when, pe that's when you get people sort of writing off giant projects or taking, taking shows off the air because, Oh, look, we can write this off. Oh, we're, we're totally shooting ourselves in the foot for time and memorial. But that's okay. The next quarter's profit will will the next quarter will show a, a big profit. And so short sighted short sightedness, killing the goose that lays the golden eggs over and over again. That is part of this crisis, which is you're getting people who only care about the next quarter, the next six months, the next year, and they're not investing in the future. They don't, and they don't love the product. You know, that's the other thing is yeah. like, yeah, it's oh, like yeah. oh, it's content. We, we can con generate content by this. And this is what about people who love the product? You know, and that's that's part of the whole problem with the industry is is you don't have people at the top who are and you do. You do have people in the middle. You have people below the top who are just as passionate. It's not like everyone is the on the studio side is bad. And, no, uh, but but there are there are the people really making decisions are like you're saying, making a decision from a ledger point of view. Yeah. Which, uh only works up to a point and is disastrous uh, beyond that because you you cut corners, you you kill long term things, you you look for the cheap answer, and pretty soon uh, you don't have a great product anymore if if you're calling it a product. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, even uh, yeah. yeah, it's content. Oh, screw yeah. off! Stop exactly. it. Um, <laughs> And this is where we go back to our boy, Dave, because I mean, you know, you want to talk about whether he was a prophet or whether he just saw the absurdity of it, you know, mid eighties, Dave is doing, who's he making fun of more than anybody? GE for buying yeah. NBC and, and, and literally yeah. prophetically almost, uh, you know, talking about the problem of, of what can happen. And now we've seen it, you know, 20 something, 30 something years later evolved yeah. into where we're at right and, now. Yeah. And, and it you can come you, to a head. Yeah. And you hear about this happening in completely different industries where, yep. you know, the, the, the VC firm or the, the, uh, whatever firm comes in and, and completely guts, guts something shows a giant profit and then leaves destruction in their wake. Unfortunately, exactly. it's happening in, in this industry now too. Exactly. Uh, it's Gordon Gecko, uh, you know, Gordon Gecko's army, um, which totally. is what, yeah. what's happening out there now. Uh, I'm so glad that we're talking about this. Um, you know, we want the creatives to be able to have their fair share and, and, I'm glad too. Like I'm glad you brought it up. Um, I, I hung out at Steve Young's apartment in 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 June, and and I was talking to him about this stuff, and we were going back and forth and stuff. And he goes, oh, "I really hope that the actor he, at that time it was I hope the directors and the actors uh, yeah. join in. Directors made their deal, uh, but the fact that the actors are doing it now, you guys really really can put a halt, you yeah. know, to production in in so many ways. And 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 I'm glad because there are so many stories that need to be told. Um, and, and reality TV and reality entertainment is only going to go so far because the pendulum will swing back to the people wanting these stories. If the people are going to want Frasier season two. They're going to want, you know, the reboot <laughs> of Frasier season two. They're going to want that. Yeah. Um, and, and we're in such a nostalgic place right now. There's so much opportunity for projects like that, for a next generation mm -hmm. to take over a franchise, a previous one. And to, I, I just love where we're at when it comes to entertainment right now. It's not, that everything's being rebooted. It's that they're kind of being rebooted because they're being continued on. And, and it's such yes. a, it's such a good time to be in entertainment for that uh, because there's so much stuff in the past that's been built that we can just continue to build upon. Yeah. And, and let's lots catch of stories up with to be told. Yeah. Let's, let's find this next, the next chapter of these things. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited too, for sure. I, uh, God, I appreciate your time so much on this here. Um, I don't know if you've kept up with Dave and 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 his projects on my next guest and some of these other things. Uh, one of the questions that I love to ask uh, people who have a, a unique perspective within Pants's production is: Do you, are there a couple of people that you would love to see Dave? Dave's obviously doing the long form thing now. Is there yeah. uh, anybody that you would be curious to see Dave have an hour conversation with? Oh my gosh! I I mean the the best people. Uh, I'm I, this is clearly a stall. I, but, uh, I can't I'm totally stalling right now. The the best people are the ones that where he's fascinated. You yes. know, like I, curiosity I feel, is the is is the key. And and I I always loved those. One there were there were there were guests like that where you could just tell he was into it. But 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 the like the 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 small you know the the person who discovered this new whatever you know whenever we had someone like that on the on yep. the 
on the show because Dave read something and thought, oh, that's really interesting. Let me have this person on. Those were always the best interviews to me because you could just see it was just someone who was really riveted, just digging in deep into something he loved and and cared about in this yeah. in this in this way. So so I would almost I would almost say like it doesn't even need to be a big name person, but I would yeah. I would love I would love for whatever whatever the latest um thing like that that he read, whether it's like the 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 grandmother and so and so or the or the the scientist who who discovered this 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 uh, new hagfish, you know, yeah. just just like something like that where where if da if he's interested, then we'll be interested because there's nothing better than uh, than when you see him engage like that. Could not agree more. Um, part of the thing that you know people talk about the 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 Midwestern charm of Dave. It's not just the Midwest. It's it's the everyman. How he, yes. he is this brilliant uh, humorist and broadcaster and all that stuff. But then he can easily turn on the curiosity switch of the everyman and yes. and ask the question that might be the obvious question, but do it in a way where you get a different answer and it educates people. It talks about, yeah, I could not agree more. Yeah. Um, that's a great answer. I, I love that so much. Um, you're, yeah, you're a friend of the show now, just so you know, you're a friend of oh. our, of the Letterman podcast, Good just point. so you're aware. Um, <laughs> we're going to finish off with a commercial uh, because I imagine that you can contribute to this as well. And, and we're also going to assemble some of these moments and send them to him because um, you know, you talk about the passage of time and, and, and things move on. Well, we have one sponsor and one sponsor only at the Letterman Podcast, and that is Rupert G and the Hello Deli. Um, Rupert is selling the deli. You can still right now go to hello-deli.com, get yourself the Late Show shirt. You can get yourself a mug, hat, all that stuff. But also get yourself a Rupert t-shirt because soon he's going to be out of the sandwich and soup business. Um, he's selling the deli right now, 30 plus years. What a run. Um, I'm certain that you would have had a super sandwich a time or two at that deli. Oh yeah. I never had my own, but the, I, but I had enjoyed a lot oh. of Carter and Craig's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed the Carter and Craig's quite a bit and, and yeah, it, it is an institution. It is a legend and, and what a, what an amazing tie to, to Letterman and to the late show. So yeah, absolutely. What a great opportunity to, uh, uh one last time. He's such a great guy. Um, He's you know, uh, yeah, I just, I love Rupert so much and we're just, um, it's really, really nice to have people on here to, to to throw you know nice words to him and that kind of stuff too, because um, he was so important to the Pants family. Like he was so important to that family. Oh yeah, and uh, and so know. good at it, and so generous with uh, whenever we needed something crazy last minute or suddenly we the act one fell apart, so we're going to go talk to talk to talk to Rupert or Dave doesn't want the survivor. <laughs> <laughs> but not a survivor in his stage anymore. So we're gonna we're gonna move him over to the Hello Deli. Uh, Rupert was always so game, and I think I think Dave recognized the the, the genuine uh, spirit with which he always always did everything, and that's why he uh, uh, loved doing with th things with him all the time. So I, I, I wish Rupert all the best in his uh, new venture. Hello yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh move on. Speaking of which, um, I, I'm so excited for Frazier. I, I'm so excited that uh, that you're you're still doing what you're doing, and um, you've got such a fresh, uh, you know, energetic mind about it here. I mean, your energy is just really, really um, beautiful, wow. Chris. I just appreciate your time. And again, I'll I'll, I'll say this too: I get sappy uh, sometimes. I do. I I don't usually do it on the air because most of you guys and gals are really self-deprecating. And, and you get uncomfortable with compliments, but I will say, I haven't said it on the show very often. I just, on behalf of all of the enthusiasts of David Letterman, thank you for contributing to something that we are, are so, oh. is so precious to us. And, um, you know, you were a part of that. You contributed to it. Thank you very, very much. And that's to you. And that's to everybody who uh, is on, has been a guest on the show and will be a guest on the show that worked on the production. Thank you so much oh for being God. a part well, of something that we love I, so much. I, I will only take the, like, 10,000th of the credit that I deserve <laughs> for that, but I, but I'll take that and say, you're welcome for that part. And, and it was obviously, as, as I said, one of the uh, great honors of my life and, and, and most uh, one of the biggest life-changing moments to, to get to work on that show. So I'm, I'm, I am at least as grateful as uh, for having gotten to work there as, as, as you are, anyone is for the fact that I did. So Thank you so much, Mike. And thank you for- Oh man, absolutely. Um, I'll take us out here and then we'll say our goodbye privately. Um, uh, that it's been another episode. This is why we do the show is for conversations just like this. So much fun, um, you know, to be present for a while thinking about these amazing moments. 
that we all uh, adored so, so much. Um, this has been another episode of the Letterman Podcast with Mike Chisholm. Coincidentally, I am Mike Chisholm. Thank you and good night. Overcoat and underpants. <laughs>